you are looking fab today. Are you ready for this? I hope you are because you're the one who pressed play. <laughs> okay, starting Genesis chapter 37. Um, still talking about, or yeah, talking about Jacob still. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed in the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Oh, good names. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brother, the sons of Bilhah, and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Hey, no names. It's just talking about the family. Okay. Um, now, Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in an old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Don't show favoritism. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose up and stood upright, while your sheaves, ga sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. He should have learned from the first time to not share. <laughs> but he continued sharing. Uh, he told his brothers, listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and the eleven stars were bowing to me. When he told his father as father... When he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Now his brothers had gone to graze their flo father's flock near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I am going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with all the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they're grazing their flocks? They have moved from here, the man answered. I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into this den of, and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and then take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ordinate robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into a cistern. The cistern was empty, there was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and not lay a hand on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So selling into slavery, well, they'll, that's okay. Killing, a little bit crosses the line. The rationalization. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, his brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, The boy isn't here. Where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped the robe in blood. They took the ornate robe back to their father and said, We found this. Examine it to see whether it's your son's robe. He recognized it and said, "This is It is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. 
At that time, Judah left his brothers and went down to stay with a man of Aldom, Aldaman named Hira. There Judah met the daughter of a Canaanite man named Shua. He married her and made love to her, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son who was named Ur. She conceived again and gave birth to a son and named him Onan. She gave birth to still another son and named him Silla. It was Kezib that she gave birth. It was at Kezib that she gave birth to him. Judah got a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the Lord's sight, so the Lord put him to death. Then Judah said to Onan, Sleep with your brother's wife and fulfill your duty to her as a brother-in-law to raise up offspring for your brother. But Onan knew that the child, he, Onan knew that the child would not be his. So whenever he slept with his brother's wife, he spilled the semen on the ground to keep from providing offspring for his brother. What he does, did was wicked in the Lord's sight, so the Lord put him to death also. Judah then, then said to his daughter-in-law, Tamar, Live as a widow in your father's household until my son Sheila grows up. Sheila, I don't know, grows up. For he thought, he may die too, just like his brothers. So Tamar went to live in her father's household. After a long time, Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua, died. When Judah had recovered from his grief, he went up to Timnah to the men who were shearing his sheep, and his friend Hira the Ad Ad Adol Adolamite went with him. When Tamar was told, your father-in-law is on his way to Timnah to shear his sheep, she took off her wid widow's clothes, covered herself in a veil to disguise herself, and sat down at the entrance to in Inam, which is on the road to Timnah. For she thought, though Sheila had now grown up, she had not been given to him as a wife. When Judah saw her, she, he thought she was a prostitute, for she had covered her face. Not realizing that she was his daughter-in-law, he went over to her by the roadside and said, Come now, let me sleep with you. And what will you give me to sleep with you, she asked. I will send you a young goat from my flock, he said. Will you give me something as a pledge until you send it, she asked. He said, What pledge should I give you? Your seal in its cord and the staff in your hand, she answered. So he gave them to her and slept with her, and she became pregnant by him. After she left, she took off her veil and put on her widow's clothes again. Meanwhile, Judah sent the young goat by his friend, the Aldamite, in order to get his pledge back from the woman. But he did not find her. He asked the men who lived there, Where is the shrine prostitute who was beside the road at Enam? Enayim? I don't know. There hasn't been any shrine prostitute here, they said. But So he went back to Judah and said, I didn't find her. Besides, the men who lived there said, There hasn't been any shrine prostitute here. Then Judah said, Let her keep what she has, or she will, or we will become a laughingstock. After all, I did send her this young goat, but you didn't find her. About three months later, Judah was told, Your daughter-in-law, Tamar, is guilty of prostitution, and as a result, she is now pregnant. Judah said, Bring her out and have her burned to death. He's, he's pretty harsh. He's willing to sin, but someone else sins, and he's like, Die. Um, Judah said, Bring her out and burn to death, yes. As she was being brought out, she sent a message to her father-in-law. I am pregnant by the man who owns these, she said, and she added, See if you recognize whose seal and cord and staff these are. Judah recognized them and said, She is more righteous than I, since I wouldn't give her to my son, Sheila, and he did not sleep with her again. When the time came for her to give, came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. As she was giving birth, one of them put out his hand, so the midwife took a scarlet thread and tied it on its wrists and said, This one came out first. But then he drew back his hand. His brother came out, and she said, So this is how you have broken out. And he was named Perez. Then his brother, who had a scarlet thread on his wrist, came out, and he was named Zara. That's interesting to me, because babies aren't born hands first. That's... Oh, and that's that's the end of day 17. <laughs> um, okay, so on that note, um, we'll leave it there. We got more of Joseph's story coming up tomorrow. This is actually one of my favorite Bible stories. I really like it. Um, I don't know. It just, the perseverance and patience that Joseph had to have and just like he had to grow into it. And like, even though he was, he saw what was going to happen in the future, he still had to like mature into it and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's cool. Also, it's cool to see how he prospered everywhere he went, even though he was living in oppression. So, I don't know. It's one of my favorite stories. Uh, that was day 17, and tomorrow we're going on to day 18. Have a great day, guys.